I'm really excited to announce that the long-awaited and much-anticipated Luminar Neo Portrait Background Replacement Tool is now available with Update 1.1. This is a major update and that means that the program is now feature complete. In this video, I'm going to show you some before and after images of what you can do with this tool. I'll also show you a few other things that are new as well. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and I teach beginning and intermediate photographers like you how to improve your photography, right from capturing camera all the way through to the end of the editing process. So if you're ready to see what's new in Luminar Neo, let's dig in. Okay, before I dig in and show you the portrait background removal tool, let me just tell you what else is new. I'll give you a quick list and then I'll show you where to find each of these things in the program. The first thing that's new and it goes along with the background removal tool is the ability to save your images as a transparent PNG, TIFF, or JPEG 2000. This is a great addition to the program and it'll allow you to do things like make composite images. Next, there are a few improvements to layers. When you add a new layer, there is now a fill, fit, or stretch button to allow you to size the new layer. Likewise, you can also reorder the layers and move one on top of the other, which you'll need to do for background replacement. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. There's also now support for using raw files as layers, and you can double click the opacity slider to reset it to the default for that layer. Inside the main part of Luminar Neo, you can now collapse groups of tools and there's been some small updates to the crop tool as well as the erase tool button. Finally, they've done over 20 bug fixes to resolve known issues. Let me hop over to Luminar Neo and I'll show you where to find these new changes and make sure you stick around till the end of the video because you'll learn some important tips that you need to know in order to use the portrait background replacement tool successfully. Now that I'm over here in Luminar Neo, let me just quickly show you where to find the changes. When you go to export your image now and save to disk, you'll notice that the image formats that you can export to now include PNG, TIFF, and JPEG 2000, all of which can contain transparency. So if you cut the background out, you can save it as a new image with the background transparent. To collapse groups of tools, just hover over the word and you'll see this little down pointing triangle show up here. When you click it, it collapses that group of tools. To reopen it, just do the same, hover over the word and click the arrow again. Moving to the crop tool, there's a couple of changes here. You'll notice that it's now called Composition AI again. I believe they previously used this name in Luminar AI and then in Luminar Neo it was called Crop AI. So they've gone back to the old name, Composition AI. The Horizon Alignment tool just has a new icon. And if you make any cropping adjustments, you'll notice that there is now an Apply button. So to accept the changes, you can just click Apply or same as previous, hit Enter or Return on your keyboard. As I mentioned, the Erase tool has a new button. The functionality is the same. It just looks prettier. Now let's dig into the portrait background replacement tool that you're so anxiously awaiting. When I first opened the new update, I had trouble finding the tool. So if you're like me, it wasn't super intuitive. I was looking down here in the panel of tools and I was looking for it in the portrait section. To find it, you'll notice that now above the crop tool, there's something called layer properties. Previously, you would only see that if you added a new layer. Now it's applicable on the base layer or your original image as well. So when you click it, you will see the same sort of screen for additional layers. But when you go to masking now, there's a new one down the bottom here called portrait background. To implement it, you just click it and it does some things analyzing your image. This one went pretty quickly because I've already done this image once. It may take a moment or two with a new image. Then you just need to click remove. This seems to be an extra step that's not needed. So perhaps they will delete this at a later time and just go straight into removing it. 
So click remove and voila, pretty good, right? So now you can see that the background, it has indeed been removed. And if it's not perfect, you have this panel down here of refinements brushes. I'm going to show you how this worked on a different image. This one is fairly simple, right? Because there's not a lot of hair showing or sticking outside of his hood. So his outline or his silhouette is pretty clean. If we zoom in, you can see that it's done a really good job on the edges here. So let's see what happens if I add a layer. I'm going to choose something with a texture. Let's try this one. Now you will see the new buttons that I mentioned with layers. If you click fit, it does exactly what you see on the screen now. Fill means it's going to expand it to cover the whole image. And stretch works the opposite way. This is one of my images in my Cuba texture pack. If you're interested to know more about that, there's a link in the description below. But the texture itself is horizontal or landscape, and because the image is vertical, it hasn't put it in the right way. So stretch stretches it and not rotates it. So if I wanted to make it rotated to fit, I would have to go like this. So it's a little bit more clunky, and I'm hoping that they implement a rotate tool so that I can rotate 90 degrees. You see my angle's not quite right. I'll just make it slightly bigger, and then you can see that it fits. I can increase the opacity to 100%, and as mentioned, now if you double click this slider, it goes back to the default 50. We can also see the problem with opacity 100 is this layer is on top of the one with the man. So another new change is being able to reorder your layers. To do that, just click on the bottom one or one that you want to move and you can see that I can now reorder them. And once I've done that, you can see that the cutout and the background was actually pretty well done. But you might be saying to yourself, well, that's a pretty easy image. It had a pretty simple background and the clean lines of his hood and his jacket make this one simple to do for background replacement. You'd be correct. So let's see how Luminar Neo background replacement tool does on some more complex images. This image has not only a complex background, but also more complex hair. So I did a background replacement on this one and put in a bokeh overlay from my pack. The link to that is in the description below as well if you want more information. I went a little wild and funky with this one, but I have one more example to show you. Remember I said to stick around till the end? I'm gonna show you how to do this now. Before I do the demonstration, I have a couple questions for you. Have you been waiting to purchase Luminar Neo until it was feature complete? In other words, you've been waiting for this update? If that's the case, use my code DPM-NEO to get a discount when you check out. As promised, I'm going to show you how to use this tool now. When I first got my hands on this update, I was a little bit confused on how to use the refinement brushes, and I found that it wasn't working really well. But after having a meeting with the Skylum team and they showed us how to use it, I'm really impressed. So I want to pass that information along to you. Here's another image where I've already done the background replacement, but look at how complex the hair is. This is a before image, and that's after the background has been removed and replaced. I'm going to remove this layer and reset the masking back to the original image, and I'll show you how I did this. As I showed on the previous image, you just click Portrait Background, and of course, it went really quickly because it's already analyzed this image. The first time you do that, you may see it thinking for a minute or so. Don't worry about that. It's analyzing the image, and especially on one that's complex like this, it may take a moment. Once it's done that, just click Remove, and we'll see how well it did. Let me zoom in a little bit. The first thing that you'll notice is it didn't get this part inside the earring here. It's got a little bit of mess on the side and around the hair at the top could be better. So initially out of the gate, you might not be impressed, but let's do some refinements. So open the refinements brush, clicking this panel here. And this is where it got confusing because I saw something 
that look like that, okay? Let me explain what this means. The orange part is highlighted as the subject, the blue part is highlighted as the background, and the part that's clear is the transition. So this is the part where it's looking for the edges of your subject. This is not the mask. This is what I thought was happening. I thought this was the mask and I was editing the mask directly. That is not the case. This is just a representation of the transition between the subject and the background. With these brushes here, you can edit to correct any mistakes. For example, I'm going to click on the object button and then I'm just going to paint this section in because that should be all her hair. If you want to view your changes, just close the refinement brush and you'll see the result. To continue, just open it again and you get this back. Now I'm going to work with the transition brush. If you're not sure which brush you're using, just make sure you click a different one and come back. I made that mistake once myself. Now I'm going to get a smaller brush. I like to use the keyboard shortcuts for sizing my brush because it's hard to know what size to use when your brush is over here. If you'd like to get my free Luminar Neo keyboard shortcuts PDF cheat sheet, there's a link to download it in the description area below. So I use the keyboard shortcuts to size the brush. That is the square bracket keys. What I'm going to do using the transition brush is just paint over this part of the earring and a little bit onto her shoulder. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So you can see now it did a better job. I find that each time you go over the edge, it's learning, okay? It's studying the image closer. Now there's bits in the hair up here that it missed as well. So I'm actually just going to go up higher with the transition to let the program know that there's some bits up here that might be needing transparency as well. Likewise in this part. See how each time I go over it, it's learning where the hair is? Let's see how it's doing. That's pretty good, right? I'm pretty happy with this section. So moving up to the top part, I'm just going to do the same. I'm gonna get a slightly larger brush and I'm just looking at the part of the hair where there's transparency. Okay, I'm just gonna do one section at a time. Okay, continuing on, do the next section. And if it didn't do a great job, just go over it again. Let me do a couple more passes and then we'll do another preview. Okay, let me zoom out. Pretty impressive, right? I went to unsplash.com and specifically looked for an image with the most complicated hair that I could find. And I have to say that I was really impressed. So I'm going to accept these changes and now let's add a new background. I used this one. Once again, I had to rotate it, get it in place. I'm not too worried about it if it's perfectly aligned in this case because it's a texture. I just want to make sure it covers the whole image, change the opacity, and change the layer order. And we should just see her up here. Poof. Now, of course, we can do anything such as flipping the image, but keep in mind, because I rotated it, it's flipping it the opposite direction, <laughs> okay? So I can flip it, and I can also do things like blur the background a little bit. I like mystical, and also destructure. So if you're using a textured image like this, and you want it to look more like a portrait background, right? Just take the structure to the negative amount and add a little bit of glow to it and you'll find that it actually works pretty well. I think I like that orientation. So let's take a look at the before again and after. You'll notice that I chose an image that was similar in tone to the background because if you go to replace it with a dark background, that's where you may end up getting some halos or white spots around her. So choose your background for success as well. 
I chose one that has lighter tones because the original background was fairly light and I knew that that would blend nicer around the hair if there was any areas that weren't quite perfect. All right, so I'd love to know what you think. Are you impressed with the Luminar Neo portrait background replacement tool? Can you see this as something that you're going to use in your workflow? And if you don't already have Luminar Neo, are you ready to jump on board? I have to say that I'm really impressed with this tool right out of the gate. Often when something brand new is released, there's a lot of bugs and problems. I haven't found anything major. So far, it's been a pleasure to work with this tool. Let me know what you think in the comment area below. If you'd like to learn more about layers in Luminar Neo, watch this video now. And please remember to give this video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Take care and I'll see you next time.